The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply important food values for milk. It's as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta. The cheese food of craft quality. Well, the Christmas spirit has really taken over the great Gildersleeve's house. Tinsel and bells, gifts being tucked away in every nook and corner. What excitement. The water commissioner can scarcely sleep at night. <sighs> Lumpy mattress. I shouldn't have hidden Leroy's bicycle under my bed. <laughs> and all the wonderful mysteries of the days before Christmas. Hidden parcels, closet doors all locked. Leroy, what you doing peeking through that keyhole? I wasn't peeking. Looking through a keyhole into a dark closet. You can't see nothing in there. Yeah, I know it. Come on, let's get a flashlight. <laughs> Now it's coming on Christmas Eve. Gee whiz, Unc, is that all the presents you're putting under the tree? Well, that's all for now, Leroy. I may have a couple of other little items to bring down after you're snug in your bed. Yeah? While visions of sugar plums dance through your head. That's something I could never figure out. What's a sugar plum? Well, uh, Made uh, room coming through. Well, Marjorie with her little presents. Little presents is right. Holy smoke, she can carry them all in one hand. What a cheapskate. <laughs> now, Leroy. It's all right, Unky. It doesn't bother me a bit. What dinky little packages. I bet everybody gets a doily. <laughs> <laughs> the size of the package, my boy, doesn't mean a thing. It's the thought that counts. Yeah, I know. This is going to be the best Christmas we ever had, Unky. Well, it could be. I have a big surprise for you. For me? I know, it's a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not a motorcycle. It's a wonderful <clears throat> surprise for a wonderful uncle. Oh, Marjorie, don't hug me so tight. Oop. I heard something crack. Were they ribs? No, Leroy. Three cigars. <laughs> oh, well, I'll give them to Judge Hooker. <laughs> I'll tell them they're a new brand of cigar with hinges in the middle. <laughs> For smoking in phone booths. <laughs> oh, I can hardly wait, Uncle. Now, Marjorie, I hope you didn't buy me something expensive. You'll never guess what it is. Hmm? Oh, that must be Bronco. Yeah, that's Bronco, all right. He always rings the bell like a bear was chasing him. <laughs> Hello, Bronco. Come in. Hiya, Marge, honey. Well, come in, Bronco. Merry Christmas, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leroy. Merry Christmas to you, Bronco. Yeah, Merry Christmas, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy. Little brothers. You can leave your coat on, Bronco. We're all going over to the high school auditorium tonight. Oh? They're having the Kraft Choral Club from Chicago. Well, that's very nice, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, a lot of fine voices. Beautiful music. What are they going to sing, Unc? That opera stuff? No, Leroy. Christmas carols. Bronco, I told Unky I have a surprise for him tonight. <laughs> yeah, quite a surprise. Oh? Is Bronco in on this, too? How about a little tip, Bronco? Oh, I couldn't do that, Mr. Gildersleeve. I don't know what it is, but Bertie does. Bertie? Hmm. Well, uh, <clears throat> you children clean up the front room. I think I'll drift out to the kitchen and have a little talk with Bertie. You won't get anything out of Bertie, Uncle. Well, I'm not trying to, Marjorie. I just want to see Bertie about arrangements for this evening. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't hurt to pick up a small clue. I love Christmas. Bertie! Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, just thought I'd come out and see if you're all set for tonight. Yes, sir. Bertie's all set. Fine. Uh, 
Marjorie has a little surprise for me this evening. Yes, sir. Of course, I know what it is. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sure you know what it is, too, Bertie. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you may know what it is, but just so you'll be sure, Bertie, you write what you think it is on this piece of paper, and I'll write what I know it is, then we'll exchange pieces of paper. All right, Mr. Gillsleeve, here's my grocery pencil. There. Now we exchange, Bertie. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's see what Bertie wrote. You ain't trapping me. <laughs> Let's face it, Bertie. Marjorie's gone out and bought me a very nice present of some kind, and I'm, I'm a little worried about it. Oh? See, I don't have anything very spectacular for Marjorie. Just the usual presents for a girl. Well, don't worry about that, Mr. Gilsey. Miss Marjorie ain't worried about what she's going to get this year. She's a grown-up lady now. I know, Bertie, but I've got to give her something a little bit special. After all, she has this big surprise for me. Pretty late to go buying anything now, Mr. Gilsey. Yeah, that's right. By George, Bertie, I just had a great idea. You remember a long time ago I said when Marjorie grew up... I was going to give her my mother's diamond ring. Yes, sir. I was going to surprise her with it on her next birthday. But what's wrong with Christmas? There's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing. I'll do it, Bertie. I've got the ring up in my dresser drawer. I'll go down to Mr. Peavy's and get a fancy box for it. Oh, that sure will please her. You bet. Now, Bertie, don't you say a word about this to Marjorie? No, sir. I ain't tell nobody nothing. Don't you even give her a little hint? I ain't tell nobody nothing. Fine. What time is dinner? I ain't tell nobody... Oh, I mean six o'clock. <laughs> Good old birdie. Yeah. Well, hello, PV. Mm, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this Christmas Eve? Peavy, I need a box. Something very fancy. Well, what would you like to have in it? Well, nothing, Peavy. I just want a little empty box. It's for a Christmas present. Empty box, eh? Yeah. You're playing a little practical joke on somebody, are you? No, Peavy, it's for a ring. I want a box for a ring. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Do you have one? I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, Peavy, you must have something around here. There's a lot of little boxes there in the showcase. Mm, those are all full of cold tablets. Oh, for goodness. How about an aspirin box? You could take the aspirin out. Peavy, this is Marjorie's Christmas present. I'm giving her my mother's diamond ring. Most wonderful surprise of her life. Now, come on, Peavy. Well, I think I can find you something. Atta boy. Look at this ring. Isn't that a beauty? Oh, my, my. I've just been waiting for Marjorie to grow up so I could give it to her. Makes me feel a little old, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Seems like only yesterday that Marjorie was in here dangling her pigtails in a chocolate sundae. <laughs> yeah, those pigtails are up in the attic now. I kept them both. Very sweet girl, Marjorie. Yes, she is, Peavy. I was thinking this afternoon while Marjorie and Leroy and I were decorating the tree how much those children mean to me. How I've cared for them and watched them grow. Yeah, they're everything I have, Peavy. Mm, it's nice to feel that way. Makes a nice Christmas, too. All the stockings hung up by the chimney. You bet. Too bad you didn't have any children, Peavy. Only two stockings on your mantle? No, we have three. Mrs. Peavy hangs up both of hers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for I've got to run, Peavy. I'm picking up Miss Milford, and we're all going over to the auditorium to hear the craft chorus. Why don't you folks drop over to the house later, Peavy? Christmas Eve, you know. Well, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Happy Christmas, Carol. Yeah, see you later, Phoebe. Well, the auditorium's almost full. Yeah. Let's sit down here, Catherine. Thank you, Throckmorton. Oh, you look lovely this evening. Thank you. I feel like a debutante with this corsage you sent me. Well, what the heck? It's Christmas. I gave the florist three seventy-five and told him to shoot the works. <laughs> hey, Whoop! Who's that? Look up here in the roof! Leroy! Oh, no. Where is he? Way up there in the balcony, eating peanuts. 
Leroy, Leroy, watch those shells. Oh, look, there's Bronco and Marjorie. Yeah, you can't miss Bronco. What a moose. Aren't they cute together? Yeah. You care to put your coat over the back of the seat? Get it off your shoulders? Thank you. Nice evening gown. <laughs> Love concerts. Shh, Doc Morton, the curtain is going up. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, on this Christmas Eve, it is our pleasure to present the Kraft Choral Club under the direction of Gerhard Schroff. Well, fine looking group, all in tuxedos. I have for Marjorie tonight. What do you think of this? Oh, <gasps> what a gorgeous ring. I beg your pardon. Oh, excuse me, please. Oh, the judge late again. Well, Gilday. Good evening, Miss Milford. Good evening, Judge Hooker. Sit down, Judge. You're interrupting something important. I am? Oh, are you presenting your lady fair with a ring? Oh, for... Judge, please. This is Throckmorton's gift to Marjorie. Yeah. Yeah, Horace, why don't you drop over after the concert and watch Marjorie's eyes light up when she sees this, huh? Thank you, Gilda. I'll be happy to. Yeah, the Peavies are coming over. Shh, they're about to sing again, Rockmore. Yeah, I'd invite all the craft singers, too, but I'm afraid Bertie might run out of cheese and crackers. <laughs> Rockmore, hush. Huh? Oh, yeah. This is the best part of Christmas Eve. Very nice, Judge. Wait till we get over to our house. Marjorie starts opening her presents. Oh, brother, I can hardly wait.
Gildersleeve will return in just a minute. Santa Claus season is pretty expensive, isn't it? Well, if the holiday ahead might put your food budget in the red, here's how to economize now so you'll be prepared for the splurge meals. Use up leftovers tomorrow and Friday and Saturday by dressing them up with the wonderful cheese sauce you can make with Kraft Smooth Melting Cheese Food Velveeta. You see, you can pour this Velveeta sauce over leftovers, ham or veal or fish, or just over toast for an economical hot main dish you can make in a jiffy. That sauce will help you economize after Christmas, too, when you serve it with the last bits of the Christmas bird. For that tasty sauce, all you do is melt one half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Then gradually stir in one quarter cup of milk and season to taste. That's all there is to it for a sauce that'll give your main dish a grand, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor. And fine nourishment, too, because Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk. So for a wide variety of hot main dishes that are really economical, use good-eating Velveeta, the cheese food that's as digestible as milk itself. When you buy, be sure you get genuine Velveeta. It's the cheese food of top quality, made only by Kraft. Well, the folks have just come home from the Christmas Eve concert, and it's getting close to the big moment the great Gildersleeve has been waiting for. Uh, Marjorie, you and Catherine come over by the fire. Bronco, why don't you throw another log on? What? Oh, sure, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bronco, that's the footstool. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. I don't know what I was thinking about. He's excited tonight, Unky. (laughs) (laughs) What's everybody so excited about? It's Christmas Eve, huh? Let's light the tree and open the packages. Well, better light the tree, I guess. Where's that plug? Yeah. Get ready, everybody. Here go the lights. (gasps) Oh, Oh, it's perfectly beautiful, Throckmorton. Yeah, that's quite a tree. Isn't it wonderful? It's very effective with all those lights bubbling. Well, I'm sort of a bubbly fellow, too, around Christmas time. (laughs) Why shouldn't I be? Got a lot of good friends and a wonderful little family. You certainly have, Throckmorton. Yes, sir. I've raised two fine children, and they mean all the world to me. We go through this every year, Miss Milford. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean it. I appreciate you more and more every year. We appreciate you, too, Unc. Now let's open the presents. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, let's open the presents. My surprise to you comes last, Unky. Uh, Well, I have a surprise for you, too, Marjorie, but... Wait a minute, we can't open presents till the others get here. What others? You mean you're expecting somebody else, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I invited Judge Hooker and the Peavies. But, Uncle Mort, we thought it was just to be the family and Miss Milford. Yeah, that's what we thought, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Marjorie, I sort of wanted the judge and the Peavies to see what I have for you. Yeah, what's wrong with having them over at Christmas? They always bring presents. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Leroy is being very practical about this thing. Yeah, Christmas to Leroy is like bank night. Yeah. (laughs) Bronco, let's bring some more chairs into the dining room, huh? Say, where's Bronco? Did he fall in the fireplace? I think he went in your den, Unky. Oh? Mr. Gildersleeve... Yes, Bronco? May I see you for a minute? Certainly. Excuse me, everybody. Make the halls with flowers and holly. Do you mind if we close the door, Mr. Gildersleeve? Close the door? Is it that secret? Well, it's about the surprise Marjorie was telling you about. Well, don't tell me now, Bronco. I want to wait for it. I think I should tell you, Mr. Gildersleeve, before the others come. Huh? What difference does that make? Well, we planned this for just you and the family. Marjorie and I were going to stand up by the tree hand in hand and give you your surprise. Cute, cute. I, uh, I was going to make the speech. You? A speech? Yes, sir. I was going to tell you that Marjorie and I want to be married. Married? <laughs> well, sure, maybe sometime, Bronco. Not sometime, Mr. Gildersleeve. This is definite. I'm asking you if I may marry Marjorie. Marry Marjorie? (laughs) Little Marjorie? So, this is her surprise, eh? I love her, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes. 
And Marjorie loves me. That's pretty important. Yeah, I guess it is. We've been thinking about it for a long time. I guess it's sort of sudden to you, but... Well, what do you think, Mr. Gildersleeve? We aren't going to do anything hasty, sir. We weren't even planning it until spring. Late spring. <laughs> June, maybe? <laughs> That's long enough to wait. Don't you think so, Mr. Gildersleeve? I... I've never thought about it at all. Well, you'll probably get used to the idea of not having Marge around by then. Wouldn't you? <laughs> I've been saving my money. In fact, Marge and I aren't giving each other much for Christmas. We're looking ahead. I want to be able to take good care of Marjorie, Mr. Gildersleeve. Of course, we wouldn't do anything without your permission. So, what do you think, Mr. Gildersleeve? Bronco, I think the other guests have arrived by now. Will you tell them I'll be out in a minute? Of course, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll tell them. Little March. Can't believe it. Just can't imagine this house without her. Couldn't bear to go into her little room again. Where I used to tuck her in, read her bedtime stories, care for her when she had measles, chicken pox. I've worked and sacrificed to raise Marjorie. Now when she means the most to me, somebody wants to take her away. Boy has his nerve. Who does he think he is? Who is it? It's Catherine Throckmorton. Oh. Judge Hooker and the Peavies are outside. Don't you think you should join the party? Well, I have some thinking to do. Catherine? Yes? Bronco and Marjorie want to get married. Oh, I suspected something like that. Isn't it wonderful? What's so wonderful about it? Why, Throckmorton, I should think you'd be very proud and happy. Happy? How would you feel if your Christmas surprise meant losing your daughter? Well, I suppose I'm thinking more about Marjorie's happiness and Bronco's. How radiant she looks tonight and what it will mean to them. Try to remember, Throckmorton, that a mother wants more than anything else to have her daughter marry a nice young man. Somebody who will be kind and good to her. Bronco will. My Marjorie. What are you going to do? I don't know. Give me a little time, Catherine. Anybody want more cocoa and popcorn balls? No, thank you, Bertie. Gosh, where's Unc? It's time to open the presents. Now, Leroy, let's not be impatient. Unc has a present under the tree for you, Judge. He has? Where is Gildy? <laughs> of course, when he comes out, he ought to stand, start handing out to the little kids first. Well, they say age before beauty, Leroy. Perhaps Peavy should receive his present first. He's the oldest man here. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie, while we're waiting for the Lord of the Manor, perhaps you'll play the piano for us. Oh, Judge, I couldn't. I'm too excited tonight. Well, here comes Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm sorry if I kept everybody waiting. What have you been doing, Gildy? Hibernating in your den? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Uncle. I want to see what Santa Claus brought. Yes, it is time to pass out the presents, isn't it? Leroy, we'll start with you. Here you are, my boy. Oh, boy, thanks, Uncle. And, Bertie, here's a package with your name on it. Thank you, Mr. Gilsey. Old Santa Claus never forgets Bertie. <laughs> now we come to Marjorie. I said I had a special surprise for her tonight. Oh, that's nice. Nice. A number of years ago, my mother gave me her engagement ring. I guess she secretly hoped that someday I'd give it to a girl and start a little family. Well, I have a little family. A fine niece and nephew. But I 
Haven't been very lucky on the other score. <laughs> and so this Christmas, I thought I'd present my mother's ring to Marjorie. Oh, Anki. Splendid idea. But something has happened tonight which forces me to change my plans. Instead of giving the ring to Marjorie, I want to give it to Bronco to give to Marjorie. Oh, oh, me, Mr. Gildersleeve? You want me to give it to her? Here, Bronco. Read the card. To Marjorie, for always, from Bronco. Bronco is joining our little family. Oh, Unky, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, very much. We hadn't planned to have an engagement ring. I, I hope you'll be very happy, both of you. Let me shake your hand, my boy. Yeah, thank you. I'm so happy for you, Marjorie. Gosh, Unc, is Marjorie leaving us? Well, let's not talk about that now, huh, my boy? Hey, Bertie, isn't it time for your little Christmas song? Yes, sir, if Miss Marjorie feels like playing the piano. I never felt more like it in my life. Fine. This is a little lullaby Bertie always sang to the children since Marjorie was this high. steps out of his role as the great Gildersleeve to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. You know, we don't often get a chance to tell you listeners how much your enthusiasm and support mean to the group of people who bring you this program every week, but we mean very sincerely that if hearing the program gives you one half the pleasure that bringing it to you gives to us, we're more than satisfied. We're glad that we have this opportunity to come into your homes and wish you all the joys and blessings of the holiday season. So it's a Merry Christmas to all of you from all of us. Walter Tetley. Leroy. Mary Lee Robb. Marjorie. Lillian Randolph. Bertie. Earl Ross. Judge Hooker. Kathy Lewis. Katie Milford. Dick Crenna. Bronco. And Dick Legrand. Mr. Peavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a Merry Christmas, too, from all the people behind the scenes, from Jack Meekin and the orchestra, writers Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, from Ray Ferguson and Monty Frazier, our engineer and sound effects artist, and from our producer-director, Fran Van Hardisfeld. And, of course, these holiday greetings come to you, too, from our sponsors, the Kraft Foods Company, their representative on this program announcer, Jay Stewart, the Kraft Coral Club, and the entire family of Kraft employees. Merry Christmas, everybody, and good night. Ladies, Pab Step, the delicious cheddar cheese food, is offering you a knife of a hundred uses, the Super Slicer. It pairs faster, slices cleaner, removes olives and cherries from bottles in a jiffy. It's the handiest kitchen knife in years. And you can get this knife for only 25 cents and the top label of a round package of delicious Pabstet cheese food or the red arrow from the top of a two-pound Pabstet loaf. Send your Pabstet label and your quarter tonight to Phoenix Pabstet, Box 5239, Chicago, 77, Illinois. Please print your return address. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. Break the Bank Radio's biggest money-paying show is next on NBC.